Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright and I am the Resourceful CEO. And uh, you can see I still have on the same thing. I'm recording a bunch of videos, so. <laughs> I'm not like Cher or JLo or someone like that who changes her clothes for all these different videos. <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a simple um, Wharton grad turned small business <laughs> consultant, <laughs> consultant who is trying to help people, and uh, so I'm sitting here recording a bunch of videos at one time because I need you. You guys are asking me for videos, and uh, it's generally not something that I do a lot of. So I'm I'm trying to overcome that by recording several at one time. Anyways, with that long and lengthy uh, intro, here is the funding is out there. Access the cash you need to impact your business, and I'm going to read an excerpt from my book. And um, one on direct lending. So basically, in here, I talked to you about the different sources of financing and uh, the and how it's dependent on the different stage of your business, the industry that you're in, your cash flow situation, and these kinds of different things, and and how you can reach out to one entity or you may actually need to do a combination. And the combination applies to all companies, but a lot of the examples that I have in here are from companies that were, are, that are or were at the time that I wrote, the, wrote about them that were minority owned. So the funding is out there and available for black owned companies. And here are concrete examples in here of that. Although I don't think I say so-and-so was black, but hey, <laughs> I'm telling you that they were. <laughs> that a lot of them, that a lot of them were. So it is, it is available. And so anyways, here's one example from page 38, direct lending. Julio, okay, so this client was Hispanic and his name was not Julio. Everyone's, the people's names and the company's names are changed to protect them. They don't want their information out there. These are private companies and they don't want everyone to know what their revenue is or how much money they're spending on their loans or whatever. A lot of them don't even report to, um, what is it, Ex Experian, who is it, uh, and uh, DNB although I highly recommend that you do because it helps in strengthening your business credit, which will definitely help you in getting uh, better funding at lower rates without having to use personal guarantees so strongly. Okay, but anyways, Julio entered into negotiations to buy a coin-operated car wash. He negotiated the seller down to 70% of the appraised value of the land plus the car wash operations at an all-in cost of $650,000. Julio then contacted Rose Ann, who works for a large national direct lender. Direct lender is typically a bank, but I just call it a direct lender and, and the funding is out there. He told her he needed a loan to purchase the car wash. In addition, he needed $100,000 in working capital to make upgrades and pay contractors. Since the acquisition involved significant real estate holdings to use as security for the loan, Roseanne determined that she could lend up to 85% of the appraised value of the land and building or up to $789,000. She, in she was lending up to 85% because it's an ongoing an ongoing business. It's not just property because typically in commercial real estate, they only lend like 70%. So just wanted to let you know that that's an aside. That's the additional information you get from watching the videos. <laughs> okay, okay. She told Julio that she needed to show that he contributed 10% towards the total financing. 
Julio then approached the seller and asked and asked him <clears throat> asked him to structure the deal so that the discount Julio had negotiated was reflected as nearly 15% of the total purchase. The seller agreed, raising the price in the purchase agreement to 750,000 while indicating that Julio had contributed 100,000 with 650,000 more due at closing. Yes, okay. So Julio received a $750,000 loan from the direct lender. Yes, okay. So the reason why he was able to do this was because although he negotiated the price down to 650,000, remember, the that was 70 the 650,000 was 70% of the appraisal value. So the appraisal was significantly higher. So again, the um, the lender was able to lenders go against appraised values, right? Was, when when you're talking about land and equipment, they use the appraised value. So, anyways, that's what I'm telling you. That's why how why we were I was able to structure this deal this way. So let me just reread this so that you fully understand what's going on. Since the acquisition involves significant real estate holding to use as security for the loan, Rose Ann determined that she could lend up to 85% of the appraised value of the land or up to $789,000, okay? And again, up to 85% because this is an ongoing business enterprise. She told Julio that she needed to show that he contributed 10% towards the total financing. Julio then approached the seller and asked him to structure the deal so that the discount Julio had negotiated was reflected as nearly 15% of the total purchase. Julio approached the seller because I said, look, dude, you, it's great that you, you finance this. I mean, you, you, you got this great concession, his huge concession in price, but you don't have that much money. So we need to we need to structure it a different way and this is what I suggest.